Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So Tony Yoka defeats fellow unbeaten prospect Peter Milas by a 7th round stoppage victory. Now going into this fight, I was somewhat looking forward to it. It's always good to see two half-decent heavyweight prospects going at it, especially when they are unbeaten, and to me, this fight really made sense for both guys in regards to, you know, getting to the next level. I, I quite liked this fight going in, and early on, I actually felt this fight was relatively competitive. The first round, in my opinion, could have gone either way. Peter Milas was kind of boxing and moving, switching stances, he was very hook-happy, kind of throwing flurries here and there, a few shots to the body. Tony Yoka was landing the straighter, more conventional eye-catching shots. The first round was very close. It could have gone either way, in my opinion, but me personally, I would lean towards Tony Yoka. But again, it could have gone either way. The second round, once again, Peter Milas boxing and moving, trying to be awkward, trying to be elusive, throwing flurries, mainly with hooks. Tony Yoka in round two uh, is managing the distance a lot better, uh, keeping Milas at arm's length and once again landing straight shots, um, you know, good one-twos and whatnot. Again, it was a competitive round, but I scored it to Tony Yoka. In the third round, Peter Milas seems to be settling down a bit. He's boxing a bit more on the back foot, landing a couple of flurries here and there and also some good counter hooks. Tony Yoka in the third round is a bit more aggressive than he was in the previous two rounds. He throws a few more combinations. Tony Yoka finishes the round quite strong. Round three, in my opinion, was a very close round. It could have gone either way. I would have maybe edged it to Tony Yoka, but if you scored it to Peter Milas, I wouldn't have complained. Round four, Peter Milas really kind of picked off what he did in round three in regards to boxing on the back foot, trying to counter, landing the jab, and all in all, he's just the more busy guy in round four. He lands a few flurries here and there. Tony Yoka, he landed a couple of right hands, he landed a couple of jabs, but in round four, to me, Tony Yoka's output was not good enough, and I felt round four went to Peter Milas. So four rounds in, I have it three rounds to one for Tony Yoka, but to tell you the truth, the first three rounds, in my opinion, were all very close. They could be scored either way. To me, the fourth round was a clear Peter Milas round. Round five, Tony Yoka, in my opinion, definitely wins the round. Milas is still moving. He's still trying to be awkward, and he's still throwing punches here and there in flurries. But at this point, you can tell that Peter Milas didn't really have the power to get Tony Yoka's attention or damage him. And in round five, Tony Yoka kind of picked up the pace again. He kind of got his distance down again, landed, uh, landed some good jabs, some good right hands, good one-twos. And he also actually put more of an impetus into landing to the body of Peter Milas. And he landed a couple of good left hooks in the fifth round. To me, round five was a clear Tony Yoka round, as far as I'm concerned. And to me, this was when the writing was on the wall for Peter Milas, because in round six, I felt Milas looked quite tired. Maybe the bodywork of Yoka in round five had an effect, but in round six, I felt Milas looked quite tired. He wasn't throwing as many punches. He was clinching a bit more. And to me, Tony Yoka was the guy who was being far more purposeful with his work, you know, kind of leading with right hands, trying to work the body. And, you know, uh, Yoka kind of bossed for sixth round, and Peter Milas was kind of, you know, it looked like he was fading. And in round seven, that kind of confirmed my my belief in regards to that Milas was fading. Round seven was where this fight ended. Milas, at the start of the round, you know, tried to throw, uh, throw a few combinations. Um, but once again, he's mainly kind of on the back foot, being kind of negative, I would say. At this point, Tony Yoka is being far more aggressive in his approach. He's looking for power shots. He's looking to walk Milas down, and he's looking for the stoppage. And in the seventh round, Tony Yoka lands a good left hook right to the head, and uh, Peter Milas gets dropped to the canvas. Peter Milas does beat the count, but 
at this point in time he looks completely spent and the writing is on the wall at this point in time. Milas tries to get away but uh, Yoka kind of uh, closes the distance, lands a flurry of punches, a couple of body shots, Milas goes down, he stays down for a little while. Now he does beat the count but he really doesn't look convincing and the referee waves it off. I think the referee could have let this continue but to be honest Peter Milas's body language once he got up from the second knockdown, wasn't convincing to be honest, and I, I can see why the referee stopped this fight, but all in all, I think this was a pretty good test for Tony Oka. Yes, in this fight again, he didn't look perfect, he looked, dare I say, somewhat vulnerable, but at, at the end of the day, he fought another unbeaten prospect, a guy who was... Definitely in his prime. I believe Peter Milas is something like 26 years old. He's he's really not that old at all. He's six foot four, six foot five, in his prime, unbeaten. So this was a good test for Tony Yoka. And he definitely had some issues early on. But ultimately he got the win. So yeah, for me it's always good to see young heavyweight prospects going at it. And on this occasion, Tony Yoka got the best of Peter Milas, and he won by a seventh round stoppage. Where does Tony Yoka go from here, I'm not sure, maybe they'll try and get a Carlos Takam fight in France, you know, obviously the French connection there, I'm sure that fight would do good numbers in France, so I'm not sure what Tony Yoka does next, but hopefully he stays active, uh, that's the main thing, obviously he won the gold medal in Rio 2016, but his career so far has kind of been slow, you know, in regards to his pro career, so hopefully he stays active. I'm still not all that convinced by Tony Yoka as like an elite level heavyweight prospect, but he's certainly a pretty well-rounded boxer. Uh, good speed, nice jab, good solid fundamentals. He does the, the basics really well. Again, I like the fact he works for body for a heavyweight, but you know, again, he sometimes he looks a little too amateurish, if that makes sense. And also, I'm not convinced by his chin and his ability to handle like pressure fighters, so... I still have a lot of question marks over Tony Yoka, but this was a pretty good victory. A victory over a fellow unbeaten prospect in his prime. You can't really argue with that. A good fight for Tony Yoka at this stage, and he won, so we'll see where he goes next. Anyway, share your thoughts below. It's been your guy Delboy. Peace.